Hi, my name's Kirsten. This is the Paper Nets Podcast, episode number five. It's been a little while since I have posted a podcast episode, and since the last one, I have reached a cool milestone of a thousand subscribers. And uh, that's wild. <laughs> so I just, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, it feels, um, yeah, surreal. Um, so that's you. Thanks. And if it's not you yet, then like you should subscribe. <laughs> but yeah, thank you everybody for, for tuning in. So um, yeah, it's it's been a little while, partly because I just haven't been dating quite as much. Um, the kids are out of school now and it's been hot. We were... Uh, away on vacation for a week and yeah there just hasn't been quite as much space for this um, which is fine um, but I wanted to um, make time for it again so I got only whips to talk about today um, no finished objects except for the one I'm wearing but it's old and a book that I read while I was on holidays I want to talk about and that's kind of going to be it. So yeah, first things first, um, this is the summer sorrel that I'm wearing. Um, it's a pattern by Woolen Pine and uh, I came out a few years ago. Their sorrel pattern was the first in like in the series. Uh, I think they've got like regular sorrel, which is fingering and mohair. This is summer sorrel just in fingering. And then they have a spring sorrel, which I want to say is in DK weight. I think that's all of them. Um, I fell in love with the sorrel pattern when it first came out and yeah, I still, that is still on my list um, to make one day. It was a fun pattern to knit. I was very proud of my um, fade that I came up with for it. Um, the top section of the yoke is a, it was a collaboration yarn, a collaboration yarn between Ancient Arts Yarn and River City Yarns, which is or was a yarn store here in Edmonton. Um, they've just closed up shop and kind of transitioning more into just like teaching stuff. Um, and anyways, they used to do collaboration yarns with various yarn dyers. And so this one was a Peter Rabbit inspired colorway. And so I bought it um, initially because my nursery theme for my oldest was Peter Rabbit. And I thought, oh, that'd be so sweet. I'll like make him something that's you know with this Peter Rabbit yarn like that'd be really special for me but like turns out it wasn't special for him because he didn't and still doesn't really wear <laughs> wear any of my knitting he wears toques um but he's like quite particular about what he wears and knitting is not on that list and so I was like well I'm I'm gonna use it then um and then the other so yeah it's the Peter Rabbit colorway and then um Matisse and Horizons and I, yeah, I love how it all faded together. I think that this was my first time using Ancient Arts Yarn. They quickly became my very favorite yarn company. And I'm pretty sure it's my first time using like a hand dyed skein of yarn. And so it was so delightful. Like it was like, I wish that I could experience that joy again <laughs> for the first time. Um, it was just like coming across the like speckles of color and like, especially with the dip stitches of just like how it kind of like broke up the color a bit. And yeah, it was, it was really, um, it was a really fun knit, which is good because I re-knit the yoke like three times, I think. And I don't know why actually part of it is because my gauge swatch lied and I just had to kind of wing it as I went. Um, yeah, I'm remembering now. Like, yeah, just ripping out. And then because of how you fade it together, then I had like two balls of yarn I was pulling apart. And my balls of yarn kept getting tangled just like in them, like on themselves. It was, it was a labor of love. Um, um, it's the Ancient Art Sock Nato base. And so it's, um, I want to say it's 80-20 superwash merino nylon. Um, it's a kind of a almost sport weight weight actually um anyways it's delightful I have lots of it and lots of socks not lots I don't I'm not a big sock knitter I have a handful of socks knit with it 
um, which actually this is, I grabbed this pair of socks down. Um, I made this with leftovers of the, of the sweater so that I could match. I thought that was funny. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I striped the mini skein that came with the, um, Peter Rabbit one, uh, which I think it was called, I think the colorway of that one was called like little blue jacket or something to go with the Peter Rabbit thing and then striped it with the, um, the Peter Rabbit color. So these are fun. Um, this was the Rose City Rollers pattern by um, Mayor Catherine Briner. And they are my favorite pair of socks, except that I need to redo the cast on, on this pair. I can feel it. It's like, it is, when I stretch it, it is smaller than the circumference of my like foot to pull it on. And so I have to like squish my, <laughs> like squish my skin in order to actually like get the sock on. And then once it's on, it's fine. But for whatever reason, my cast on on that one was tighter and I should just unpick it and redo it. This one's a bit stretchier. I think I figured it out. I think that was my first one. And then I figured it out for the second one. So I cast on just like a, a touch looser. But um, besides that, once I get them on, they're my favorite pair of socks. Um, so, and then... I posted this on my Instagram the other day, well, a couple weeks ago when I was wearing this, but um, I also got a, um, a phone case made with a picture of this fabric that the, like, the shirt made. And so it's on my old, it's on my old phone case. And so like it had a nicer pop socket on it before. It had just like a nice blue, like jewel one, but um, I, I love it. And then I got a new phone and now I have a boring case. And this is referred to as the blue phone by my children because now they play with it with like random games that they have on it and stuff. Um, but anyways, it just, it makes me very happy um, to have my matching sweater and socks in my phone case. Um, so anyways, I, um, let's see. Okay, so just to like jump right into my whips then because I am working on another pair of Rose City rollers. Um, so here's my... One of my cast-ons this month. This is um, yarn by Rose Hill Yarns, which are semi-local to me. Their skeins are just like, I just want to buy all of them and just like hang them as art in my knitting room because they're so beautiful and I like want to eat them. They're so beautiful, you know? <laughs> so um, I have a lot of their skeins of yarn that I just like to look at and then I need to actually just knit with them. So this is one of those skeins. It's called uh, Where Dreamers Go. And I'd actually, let's see if that's near here. Uh, okay, once upon a time I had a knitting machine, um, a flatbed knitting machine, and I, except it had two beds. And so you could actually knit in a tube on it. It's called the Passup Duomatic 80. I bought it on a whim, secondhand from somebody. Um, and I had it for a couple years. I like knit a handful of things. I knit a pair of socks on it that I wear regularly. It had a very steep learning curve and I sold it um, this past winter. And feel a little bit sad about that, but it is just is what it is. So this, I had made a tube with this yarn on the sock. No, it's not a sock machine. That's the problem <laughs> on the knitting machine, but it did not turn out very well. So um, you can do short row um, heels on it. And so I've successfully done that on the knitting machine and you can do decreases and stuff, but like, look at that. I don't know if you can see. Mm, look at that toe that I knit. Mm, so, so delightful, isn't it? And then because it's the two beds and you know, you like pull the carriage across and it knits one bed, pull the carriage across the other way and knits the other bed. And you can just like make it so it knits round and round in a tube. Um, but it's like makes the worst laddering in the world, kind of like when you're knitting Magic Loop. Um, and this, this tube did not work out well. Um, I might wash it really aggressively and like see what happens to this ladder down the side. But anyways, it, this yarn has been in timeout because of this. I made this probably two years ago. Um, 
and decided that I was going to knit a nice pair of socks with it instead. Um, so that's what this is. It's my like grab when I need something simple to knit on kind of project. Um, I was sitting on the beach knitting it last week uh, when we were at the lake. Um, my sister-in-law was just like knitting a whole sweater. <laughs> I was just working on a very small sock. Um, she was very brave having her knitting by the sand by my children, <laughs> but it's, I think it went okay. Um, so that's one of my whips. My other whip is this one right here. Um, so I showed this on the last, um, at least the last one, maybe the last two episodes. Um, this is a test knit for the Bluebird box and who's a local designer to me and I'm knitting with local wool. Uh, it's this custom woolen mills on the mule spinner two ply and it's very woolly and very like sheepy and delightful and I really enjoy that yarn. It blocks so nicely. I'm like, can't wait to wash it, especially because I'm like having a little bit of like puckering here in my yoke. Um, but overall, I'm like quite happy with how it's turning out. I've got um, body done. I'm on the sleeve, first sleeve. Um, and then with how the sleeve goes, it finishes with the dark yarn again instead of with the light yarn, which I think is just so, like it looks so good. Um, seeing, I've, I've kind of put it on pause for the last uh, like couple weeks. Um, and so a lot of people have finished. And so like seeing their projects come up in the tester thread and stuff, it's like, there's some beautiful ones. There's someone who knit, um, the, I can never remember which one's the technically like the main color, which one's the contrast color, but this one, this color in spin cycle. And so just like how it fades and stuff in the body is beautiful. So I'm excited to see everybody's projects. Like once the pattern comes out, which I think it comes out in September. Um, so anyways, I had finished the body, wanted to cast on for the sleeves, um, had to do a little bit of like figuring out for that because of where I split for the yoke, um, figure out like what pattern I wanted to keep going on the sleeve, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I did not want to knit a giant wool sweater and worsted weight yarn in British Columbia at the lake when it was so hot. Um, and I left it at home. It's, I think I need to be finished by the end of August. And so I've got time. I, it's just been on, on pause, but I can come back to it now that we're home from vacation. And, um, except that I have another deadline that I also need to work on, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, anyways, what else do I want to say about this? I'm not sure. Um, I'll probably talk about it again when the pattern's actually released um, and then can like show it off a bit more. But it's been, it's been fun to knit. The color work is quite uh, engaging because, because it changed, it changes frequently and it's like it's simple to remember. And so it's been, it was a fun knit to do. Um, I've been enjoying it and I, and because I love the yarn, um, the uh, pattern was designed with Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. I opted to use a more affordable option, which I think is a great substitute. So, um, yeah, I don't think it has a name yet. So it's the Bluebird box test knit for now. Um, okay. So the other knit I have on the go that is also on a bit of a deadline that I do actually really need to work on is a sweater that I'm knitting for Jody of the grocery girls. And so she, um, I had asked her if I could join her sample knitter pool um, and she said yes and I was thrilled and then she promptly asked like, do you want to make a sweater? And I said, yes, <laughs> yes I do. <laughs> and so I am knitting um, a, it's in testing right now. It's patterned by Hohi Locatelli. Uh, it's called Instant Crush. Also just like very beautiful. Can't wait to see everybody's patterns. Um, Tracy of the Grocery Girls has been knitting it and showing it off on their Instagram. I think they showed it in their last, um, podcast episode too. And hers is beautiful. Um, and so, but I'm feeling a little bit behind, so I need to get going on that. But I'm knitting it with Jody's yarn, Frankie Gray Fibers. So this is my swatch and it's mohair held double. 
and it's just it's so lovely I've never knit just with mohair or mohair held double and it makes just like such a nice fabric it's so squishy and drapey and light and yes it's just it's been lovely to knit with um so I am almost ready to split for sleeves um and it didn't put it onto I love my like you know the like barber cord things for putting stitches on hold it's super hard to do with mohair and so I didn't put it onto stitch holder and so it's just all kind of bundled up but look it's like probably so blown out it's like it's a bit it's a bit fluorescent oh okay my husband called me like just as I was holding up the sweater and so I can't remember what I said right before that because then we just like talked for 10 minutes so anyways here's the there's the sweater <laughs> I don't know how well it's going to show up. It's very neon-y and bright and lovely. And uh, yeah, it's been very fun to knit. Um, so this is Jody's um, yarn company, Frankie Gray, Frankie Gray Fibers. Um, the gray is mouse gray. Um, the, the medium pink, I guess, is Barbie Girl. The brighter pink is Hibiscus. And then the really soft um, pink in between is called whisper um, and yes it is just like a pink fluffy cloud um, this is a raglan top-down raglan construction and so if you remember from a few episodes ago when I was working on my Clark pullover which is a top on top-down raglan and I was like sometimes I get confused about what I'm supposed to be doing when I'm knitting a raglan. So I've encountered that a little bit with this. Um, the pattern is gonna be beautiful. Um, it is, everything's charted. And so I've knit a, another raglan, a bottom, bottom up color work raglan. And it was like decrease for the yoke. And you just had to like figure it out, which is like, it was fine, um, but took a lot of brain power, I guess, to like, for me to make sure that the pattern was always lining up. This is completely charted. And so like every size, um, and, but that means that sometimes I still, I finally added a special like marker at my sleeves so that I knew when I was doing a sleeve and when I was doing a body, like where, where am I? Especially as it has gotten bigger because the, like initially like the front and the back, where you could quite tell quite a bit, like there's more stitches there, but just like as I'm almost at the split. And so anyways, I'll just, I'll just getting confused sometimes and ripping back mohair is just not fun to do. Um, you can, can you hear all of my, all my jangly stitch markers, which has been very helpful for me. So anyways, um, I need to boogie though, because this I'm supposed to be done this in two weeks. Um, I will be done this in two weeks, but it, I had planned to knit quite a bit of it last week while we were on holidays, but it was very hot and I had to do a bit of, um, I had to like think a little bit more than what I was able to do on vacation. <laughs> so it kind of got put aside. I like, I knit like a few inches on it. Um, last week, but I just, and I knit another, um, I probably knit an inch on it today. Um, just like in between throwing granola bars at my kids. Um, so anyways, it'll, it'll come. I think once I, um, split, it's going to feel like it goes fast because I won't have to keep track of my raglans anymore. Um, so anyways, this has been a very fun knit. I feel very lucky to be getting to knit this for Jody, And um, I am excited to see what it turns into because just like as I keep adding more and more of it, it's just like the pattern is so beautiful. So um, yes, this will be another one that has just like once the pattern is released and like all the test projects and stuff are available on Ravelry, like it'll be fun to just like go and look at them because it's four colors and like everyone's just going to be different. It's going to be delightful. So, um, yeah, so that's been my like major whip that I need to get going on. 
Um, when I was packing for our trip, um, I just like threw all of my yarn in there. I grabbed my gear, my, <laughs> I brought my Swift along and my ball winder and just like grabbed a whole bunch of other random skeins of yarn. I like kind of had a plan in mind, but like didn't really know what I was going to want to knit on. Thankfully I did grab something else because this just like had to be set aside a little bit, um, last week. So in the meantime, I cast on, um, a DRK everyday cowl and I'm almost done. And I am just going to finish this row real quick because I was knitting on it while I was ch chatting with my husband just now. Um, so this is, I am using my yarn that I bought in Montana at Farmer Silver Fibers, which like feels like a little bit of a miracle that I am knitting it so quickly. Um, this is the Pishkin DK base from Farmer Silver Fibers in, it's the gray colorway in Chinook Winds. Um, that was just a lovely kind of mid gray. Um, and then I'm using Spin Cycle Dream State in the color Absolute Zero, I think. Um, and this is my first time using Dream State before. So I've knit with um, Dyed in the Wool, but I hadn't knit with um, Dream State before. And like as soon as I started, I didn't swatch, I just like, you know, just cast on. Um, but it's just like, it's so squishy and lovely. Um, I made the shifty cowl. I never remember what it's called. And it's similar construction or it's like knit. I don't know if it would be called like on the bias. I don't know. Anyways, and it's like, how does this turn into a cowl? Nobody knows until you're done. Um, and I definitely made mistakes on my other one. And so this one is, it's coming. It'll be seamed here and then this is like, you know, the like V of the cowl down here. Um, I'm really enjoying how the spin cycle is fading. It's got this nice like brighter purple in the middle and then yeah, it's quite, that's also like very fun to knit, right? Like it's just every, um, every two rows, it's just like something different um, because of the color in the yarn. So that's fun. Um, and it's garter. So it's like, it's obviously, I just cast this on like a week ago. Um, it's been zoom in. I, um, yeah, we'd gone to BC. And so we drive through the mountains and I cannot knit in the car usually. Um, and so I didn't knit at all on the way out there. It's like an eight hour drive. Um, it was, it took me less time to drive to Great Falls, Montana than it took for us to drive to shoe shops in British Columbia. Um, it just feels like kind of silly, but that's Canada for you. Um, uh, anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So then on the way home, once we got out of the mountains and I was like feeling pretty woozy as we were like driving through the mountains, um, and my five-year-old just like screamed for the first half of the drive pretty well. He was just, everything was, he was angry about everything. Um, and yeah, then he fell asleep and then we got out of the mountains and then I knit on this quite a bit. And so most of it was actually knit in the car on the drive home. Um, so I'm very close to being done, but where's my little tiny ball? I can't even find it because it's so small. This is all the spin cycle I have left. And I knew I was going to be cutting it close. Um, I don't think I'm going to have enough. And it's supposed to, also my numbers are just like a touch off of what they're supposed to be. So I don't actually know how many rows I have left. Um, I just keep like folding it in half and like seeing if I've like decreased enough um, to make it even. This is the same problem that I had with my shifty cowl and I don't know where the error was because I was fine right up until my like last row when I counted to like I'd done all of my increases and now it was time to decrease again and then my numbers were off and I was in the car and I didn't know how to fix it well I could have fixed it but I didn't it wasn't immediately clear <laughs> how to fix it and so I just didn't and um there's a possibility that I made it a little bit too big I suppose 
which might be why I'm running out of yarn. Anyways, um, the last step is an I-cord bind off and you're supposed to bind off in two colors. I absolutely do not have enough yarn for that. Um, so I'm going to find an alternative yarn to bind off with. I have random tid like bits of dyed in the wool that are similar colors because I love blue and purple and those are my favorite colors. <laughs> I have a lot of yarn in those colors. I'm just going to fake it a bit. It's fine. Um, but it's like also like on the front like edge of the cowl. So anyways, it's been a fun knit. And um, when I mentioned the those when I mentioned the yarn that I bought in my last episode, somebody commented saying like, oh, that cowl that you showed that you wanted to knit with it, like it's double sided, like you're not going to have enough yarn. <laughs> and I like just hadn't paid attention to that. Um, so thank you to that person for saying that. Um, and really, I don't technically have enough yarn for this one either. But I like looked through a bunch of projects and people saying that they used like 1.1 skeins. And I'm like, I'm not buying two skeins of this yarn so that I can use 0.1 of it. Um, it's fine. I'll figure it out. So um, I'll show you next time. Um, anyways, it's almost done. Probably I would have finished it just now this evening as I was knitting it while I was talking to my husband, but he lost cell reception and so we had to stop talking um, and I could return to filming. So anyways, that's all of my projects. So I think four whips, um, an almost FO with the cowl. The sock will be, who knows if that ever gets finished or not. The hohi sweater will be done in two weeks from now. This will be done in four weeks from now. And then I don't know what I'm going to do after that. Um, the other kind of FO, I guess, that I wanted to talk about a little bit, um, which now I need to look up. No, I think I'll remember what they're called. Um, I did some sewing before we went to the lake. And so there was a couple of things that there was more that I wanted to make that I didn't get to. But um, one of the things was I made myself a pair of shorts. And so I had probably like 10 days before we left, gone to the fabric store, bought a bunch of random things, um, had like grabbed a bolt of jean fabric and then found some in the remnants. And I was like, okay, I think this will be enough for shorts. But like, I didn't, I never made shorts before. I've never made jeans before. I've never made proper pants before. And my goal is to make my own jeans, like full like length pair of jeans. And this was going to be my test. And so I just found remnant fabric. It was 20% off then. Um, like, great. I had watched a whole bunch of videos about the top down center out method for fitting pants. I follow a lot of sewists on Instagram, um, which has been a fun new world to kind of dive into. Um, I have been sewing for myself for like quite a long time, but I am a novice sewist. And yes, I just feel like my Everest is going to be sewing myself a pair of jeans that fit really well. Um, so I have sewed myself now a pair of jean shorts that fit like 85%. And I think that was pretty good for a first try. Um, so that's what I did leading up to our trip, which is part of also why I wasn't knitting and wasn't filming a podcast. Um, so the problem is, is that I bought this remnant of jean fabric, um, spent a lot of time making, I didn't want to make a twall. I just wanted to use the fabric that I had because this was already my twall for my jeans and, um, spent a lot of time making the waistband, watched most of the top down center out videos that I'll, I can't remember who the creator was, who came up with this method. And then also there's another creator who like has a bunch of YouTube tutorials about it that are really good, but I'll link those down below. Um, anyways, I just wanted to get going made my waistband and I was like, I don't understand how to know if this is going to fit or not, but sure. Yes. Um, had like done some things incorrectly, had to unpick it, had to redo it. Okay, great. Um, cut out my, so I had my waistband pieces, my belt loops, my pockets, my fly stand. I hadn't actually cut out the legs 
of the jeans yet. Turns out I didn't have enough fabric. So I'm not surprised. Um, I definitely should have cut that out first because I probably could have got the rest of the pieces out of just like, you know, playing Tetris with the rep, like the fabric scraps. Um, but I didn't do that. Um, so I almost just abandoned the project, but I was like, no, I wanted to get this done before we went to the lake. So I took a scrap of my fabric, thankfully that I thought to grab one that had some selvage on it, went back to the fabric store and found something that was very close. <laughs> it was not identical. I don't think you can tell. It might be because I had already washed the fabric. The colors were slightly different. I think that that might be what it was actually. Now that I'm saying this out loud, I just was so sure that I had bought, it was just like a shade darker of jean fabric. And um, because I had cut out, ooh, I'd actually cut out like a, like a front left piece and then I had to cut out the front right and then the both of the backs with the new fabric. And so you could tell like on the seam that they were like slightly different shades. And I was like, whatever, it's fine. Um, also my hands were just like stained blue and so I had to wash the fabric like multiple times and so I wonder if maybe now it's all kind of even if it's come out in the wash. Um, anyways, I'm going to see if I can like stand up and show you my shorts. I'm wearing them right now so that I could show you. Um, I, yes, I don't need to give disclaimers about my sewing. I already did saying that I'm a novice sewist. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out though. So let's just see if I can, if I can show them to you. Okay. Can you kind of see them? Mm. Mm. <laughs> so awkward. This is the funnest part is that I've got fun cherry fabric on my pockets. The pockets are so deep. Look how far they go. My whole phone plus some fits in there. Um, I did the, just a zipper fly. Um, I never actually ever say, <sighs> okay, I got so excited and nervous about showing my shorts that I didn't say what they were. Um, they're the worker trousers by the Modern Sewing Company. Um, and so I bought this pattern a while ago. I also bought their, um, like tutorial class, I guess, about how to actually make them, which turned out to be very useful considering I've never done this before. Um, and that was, I had to like make myself stop. I was gonna like, I think when I was trying to figure out the fly, I was like, I'm gonna mess this up. And like, I absolutely would have. So I went and watched the tutorials and um, it was very well done. And she shows the, um, the button fly version in the tutorials, but I could figure it out enough like with the fly that it was okay with that plus the pattern instructions, like it was okay. Um, anyways, I'm pretty happy with them. They're like, I need to do a little bit of fitting on them, but I don't quite know what to do. And so I need to learn more about how to fit things, which is why I started to try and figure out this top down center out thing. Um, which I can't, I don't even understand it enough to explain it about what it is. And so, yeah, I can't even, I can't even tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so again, because I don't know what I need to do to make my few adjustments, um, to like make them really fit well, I have no more information for you about that. So if you know more about that than me, then you're probably shaking your head being like, no, that's not it at all. And if you're thinking, wow, Kirsten knows a lot about this. No, I don't. I really don't. Um, just learning, but I'm proud of my shorts. I wore them a lot last week. Um, I think they'll be a good... I wanted to like, I don't want to be precious with them. I want to wear them um, and be proud of myself for, for making them. So I had also bought some more fabric to actually make the jeans with, but um, that's going to be on pause for now. I don't actually love sewing that much. Um, the process of sewing, I don't enjoy. The product, I enjoy when it fits. Um, Knitting, I like almost all of it. The process plus the product. Um, so I'd rather be spending my time knitting. But you also like can make things a lot faster when you're sewing. Um, and I have, yeah, some other 
other projects in mind. The other thing I made was swimsuit bottoms. And so I had made myself a, like a tankini top um, last summer maybe or the summer before that. And then when I was at the fabric store, I saw the identical fabric um, that I had used. And so I bought some and decided I was going to make myself um, a pair of swim bottoms. Um, and I think I did that the night before we left. <laughs> so it was fast. That I don't remember the name of which pattern I ended up using because I'd looked at a lot. But again, I'll link that down below. Um, and they were great. They also don't like fit super awesome, um, but they serve their purpose and they're like shorts. And so they were great for being at the beach with my kids and um, going tubing. So um, yeah, we, that was fun to get to share that with my kids. I grew up going boating a lot with my family. And so then getting to do that with um, my two was a lot of fun. And they loved it. I wasn't sure. We'd actually gone boating two years ago with them, which was their first time. And my younger son was keen to go tubing with me. My older son wasn't. And this time around, they were both like very excited about it and just like had the time of their lives. So that was really fun to get to share that with them. Um, and this like very nostalgic part of my, um, my childhood. And then seeing them just like delight in it as well was like really lovely. There's a line from um, a Brandy Carlisle song called The Mother um, that I love this song. And I actually, I haven't been able to listen to it since Beth died. Um, but there's a line in it that I love. Um, and I feel like it really like sums up my, um, my experience of motherhood and like the good things of it. <laughs> um, where's it now? Okay. But all the wonders I have seen, I will see a second time from inside of the ages through your eyes. And so that's what it was like taking my kids back to where I had a lot of summer vacations and getting to be out on the boat. And yeah, it was really um, special to get to do that. Um, also, just like the forever difficulty of not having our baby with us. And so... Um, we had a very stressful time getting out of the house when we were finishing up packing and getting out the door to leave. Um, we had, um, house sitters come and look after our cat and which were, it turned out great. We used trusted house sitters. Um, can't like suit, like fully vouch for it. I like, we had a good experience. Not everybody does, but, um, but it meant that I had to clean the house <laughs> before we left. That's not usually what happens before we leave for holidays. We usually leave the house a disaster because we've been frantically packing. But we left them a very clean house. And so it was just a, an added stress on to um, try to pack up to leave. Um, anyways, we were out the door. Kids were buckled in. I went back inside to find the cat and say goodbye to Birdie. <laughs> And she was underneath the couch. She, like, could totally tell that something was up, right? Like, that we were leaving. She didn't know that people were showing up an hour later to come and look after her for the week. Um, and she was underneath the couch. And so I, like, was like... <laughs> so, uh, it's funny, but it's, like, funny in a sad way, you know? Um, she was underneath the couch. So I'm laying on the floor looking at her, like, talking to her. And, like, saying, like, it's okay, Birdie. Like, in my, like, cat voice, like, it's okay, Birdie. Like, somebody's coming to look after you. We're not leaving you all by yourself. And, uh, and then I just lost it. I just was lying on my cold, my hard, cold floor, sobbing, like, onto my floor. <laughs> And was like, oh, okay, I have been losing my shit all day today because it's stressful to, like, pack up and go and, like, yeah. Getting ready for a trip is stressful. But it was grief is what it was. Um, and it was really, I think, important that my body was finally like, Kirsten, pay attention. Like, 
we planned this trip when I was pregnant and we were supposed to have a seven month old along eating sand and making the drive that much longer because we were going to be stopping for diaper blowouts and nursing and um, screaming, <laughs> whatever. So yeah, I had a cry, went, and went back outside, had a cry with my husband on the driveway and was like, I'm sorry for getting so mad at you. <laughs> like it was not, it wasn't about you. Um, and yeah, we, um, he and I went for a kayak the one morning and which sounds so like, oh, we went for a kayak. We like, I made it like down a couple of houses and then I was like, my arms hurt. <laughs> Can we just sit here? So we just sat. It was lovely. It was, you know, early morning. The lake was really calm. It was warm out. Um, but I was feeling really sad about Beth. And we just sat on the lake and talked. And it was really, it was really good. I was also going to say about the book that I was reading, um, which is Rising Strong by Brene Brown, which I had read apparently a while ago. I like kind of remembered the premise. Um... I'd apparently lent it to a friend because when I opened it up, there was like a note from her being like, thanks for letting me borrow your book. And then I had a bunch of underlines in it already. Um, but it was a while ago. I guess probably the year that it came out, whichever, whatever year that was. Um, anyways, my husband read it randomly, um, just finished it like while we were on vacation. And so I wanted to read it too. He was, he was finding it really helpful just with like kind of the overlap with grief. Um, about this idea of like what do you do when you find yourself flat on your face and then that act of like getting up again and the vulnerability that comes with um, living wholeheartedly which is a big thing in Brene Brown's work um, and with that comes falling and being flat on your face. And so sometimes, you know, she was talking about it lots in the context of like, um, work life, personal life kind of stuff. Um, not, there's been some, I think, mentions about grief specifically, but anyways, we've been finding it helpful. Um, and yeah, that's what I read on vacation. Um, I don't read a lot of novels. I read, I don't read fiction really. And I don't know why. I think it would be a good like escape for me but um yeah anyways um so yeah I'm about halfway through the book um so I would like to make time for me to finish reading it I also, I also have the audiobook and so probably I will listen to the audiobook while I knit because that's normally how I read um but I yeah had it I'm sitting on the beach under an, under an umbrella, hiding from the sun um, while the kids played. So that was good too. Okay, um, I think that that was everything I wanted to talk about. Um, hopefully it won't be another five weeks before I post another one. It was just like, oh, that's weird. That'll be into September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird to think about. Um, so we have a busy August coming up um just with like kids are going to summer camp again and swim lessons and um yeah stuff like that but I will have lots of knitting to do so I will be making sure I get my knitting done um hopefully I have fun things to show you the next time that I podcast so um you can find me on Instagram as paper.knits. You can find me on Ravelry as this is paper knits. Um, I link everything that I talk about in the description box because I love links. And so if you're ever wondering like, what the heck colorway did she just say? Like I put it in the description box. Um, and I just link to either Ravelry for like the pattern or wherever, or, you know, like I'll link to the ancient arts website. Um, like wherever I bought the thing from, um, I don't like I I have a thousand subscribers on YouTube now but I am a nobody and so I'm not like making a commission off of any of those links I just really like links
I lost the end of my footage again, but maybe that's a very accurate place to end, talking about my love of links. So here's some bonus footage of me seaming up my DRK Everyday Cowl. I finished it up that evening. Um, you can see just like how much of my uh, dream state I had left, aka not very much, but yeah, I had a like very similar matching skein of um, Dye in the Wool, so that's what I used to finish off the last couple rows and then do the bind off, and I think it blended really nicely. My kids were bringing me garden peas to snack on. I hope everybody has been enjoying their summer knitting. Let me know what you've been working on, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for joining. Bye.